Infantry, number 17. After two days, the storm has slackened, and I've ordered the Zodiac boat back into the water. Everything takes too long. The crew works quickly, but the loading of the Zodiac seems to take forever. Because of the storm, a landing on the sand beaches to the north side of the island has proved impossible. Carlos and Eddie accompany me to help with the boat once we are in amongst the rocks. We have sighted a rock channel on the lee side which should offer some protection from the wind. Pruna. I'm a naturalist by inclination, an artist by training, and a rock climber by necessity. Exactly the wrong place on the island. The sea lions I have come to sketch are miles away to the west. Journal entry number 18. Landing made without incident. Carlos and Eddie leave to return to the ship. From above, the water looks almost calm. After five days at sea, I am alone on what the natives call the island of birds. Alone, if you do not include the numberless millions of creatures who are here with me. seem to be stealing from each other. I laugh at their actions. At the same time, I remind myself that human values, like stealing and private property, should not be applied to animal behavior. are doing is copulating, not making love. Attacked by Skua, a hawk-like member of the Gull family.
attack ends as suddenly as it began. I know those scores were probably protecting their nesting ground, but that doesn't change the fact that I was scared. Plain deep in my bones, scared. That's human, to be afraid. It is also human to want to investigate, to search out, to discover. This is one of the few remaining places where this instinctive urge to investigate can be fully satisfied. As the sun sets, I tell myself I am happy this journey has begun. And I remember there are two sides to any journey that must be communicated if others are to truly share the experience. There's the outside journey that cameras and microphones record. And the inside journey of thoughts and feelings that must be put into words to be shared. number 19 begin six mile trek to the other side of the island sightings on walk gull chicks hatching two adult gulls fighting an albatross soaring with unmoving wings last, sea lions, a whole colony of them. So far they pay no attention to me. seal comes ashore. He's out of place here. The bulls of the herd attack him immediately. The bulls fight to establish territories for their harems. This female gets tossed about between two competing bulls in spite of her considerable weight. Once established, the harem is inviolate, and the spunky female who occasionally decides to wander is forcefully kept in place by her huge master. to move me. Birth. The sea lion pup arrives covered by a call. Instinct prompts the mother to try to bite the call. Inexperience or timidity prevents her. If the call does not break, the pup could die.
One of the first things the mother does after the birth is to smell her pup's breath. She will then be able to find it and recognize it anywhere in the herd. The gulls arrive to eat the placenta. The sea lion pup is hungry almost immediately. The milk he laps is one of the richest in the animal kingdom. Observe, a rogue male attacking a newborn pup. No one knows why this occurs. The heron bull drives away the outsider, and the lucky pup survives. I've trained myself to overcome my revulsion at such scenes. The petrel eats what is already dead. Man kills what he does not even eat. has not ended. On this remote island, these bones are all that remain of countless thousands of sea lions who were butchered for their fur. Once there were hundreds of thousands of sea lions in this place. Five small colonies were all I could find. Keep inventing ways of killing animals without clubs or knives or guns. It's incredible, but on this unspoiled island, this penguin is covered with oil. Oil picked up from the ocean surface, deposited there by ships flushing their tanks at sea. This bird will die, like the others. This kind of killing is especially hard to accept. It's so pointless. It makes one feel so helpless. You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Come and get me. Okay, Andy. We call. Okay, Andy. Where are the penguins? Pretty soon. Hey, how you like our road? Best road in Argentina. Carlos, you agree? I don't eh? see a thing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Because of the oil on the penguins, I want to observe what effect it's having on the huge penguin rookery to the south. So I left the island early. Eddie is our guide. What now, Eddie? We lost? Oh, no. This is the end of the road. Two, three days, maybe, the other side. Two days, eh, Eddie? We go by ship, we be there now. We we'll go by walking, we'll see more. Our overland journey is abruptly halted when we come to an impassable chasm. With the truck, we can continue no further. Okay. Close the truck? Yeah, sure. Let's go. Hey, Andy, what you call that? It's called a Techo Colorado. Hmm. Wait! 
Peter, Peter. Patagonian canoes. Pat. They build their nests in burrows. It's a survival adaptation. No trees here for them. Andy, why are you in such a hurry to leave the ice? I have my reasons. You know what? You think too much. Somebody has to. Hey. Andy, you mad with me? Ah, uh, I'm too hot to be mad. That's good. I like you. You're a good man. Hold on. This is a big burrow, but in yours. Yeah. What is it? Journal entry number 42. Observe two adult owls. A burrow of baby canoers thought I was going to feed them. But a little frightened of me, too, I think. The Patagonian canoe is hunted by farmers who consider them pests and are determined to exterminate them. You see something? The Unimog. We have not come far. Journal entry number 44. Sighted some Patagonian cavies. Though not of the rabbit family, they have longish ears and hop about like animals in a children's fantasy. Journal entry, 49. Observed young Rias. Andy, listen, Rias. I see them. They will come to us? Maybe. Take my water. They are so pretty. Want to take one home? Oh, no. Now his back is smooth, but like, now when he gets big. Hmm? Yeah. You know the gauchos eat the big ones. But where's his father? These rias are the birds which so fascinated Darwin. When grown, they resemble the African ostrich, though they are an entirely different species. Okay. The male incubates, hatches, and cares for the young. Got everything? Yeah. To me, Carlos seemed an unlikely candidate for fatherhood. But as it turned out, the baby Rias disagreed. When is that? Andy, they are following you. Me? They're following you? They think you're their father.
territory and the protection of the adult male, they will probably die. I'll count. One, two, three. Here's one. Eddie, you go that way. Carlos, you go that way. I'll go over there. I'll run about 200 feet and then hide. One, two, three. It worked. Andy, they will be all right. If they find their father. Let's go. Journal entry 53. Have completed traverse of ravine. Wind freshening. And possibility of sandstorm not very encouraging. One more day required to cross the isthmus, if the weather holds. Carlos and Eddie bearing up well. Final sighting of the day. A tarantula. Did some sketches of it before going to sleep. by to the south. By mid-morning, we arrive at the salt flats. Millions of years ago, this was the floor of an ancient ocean. Wait.
300 hours, the storm has abated, and we can begin to smell the ocean, but we cannot see it. Magellan, Darwin, Drake have all journeyed to this place. They would not find a change. Beyond the last slope of land, we see one of nature's great breeding grounds. Every form of life which Magellan saw in 1520 is still thriving here. The Magellanic penguins, named for their discoverer, spend five months of each year at sea, rarely touching the land. Then they return here to breed. While Carlos and Eddie make camp, I will have time to look around. return not only to the same rookery, but to the same nest each year. Unlike the sea lions, they are monogamous and mate for life. filling the rookery with ceaseless noise and activity. Where there are eggs and defenseless young, there you find predators. But even as one egg is threatened, another begins to hatch. To the gull, an egg is simply food. bird which attacked me on the island. Mid-air piracy. The skua wants the egg. He's got it. aggressive behavior, a penguin defends its egg. This attack by the score is a grim reminder of the harshness of nature. I busy myself with the drawing. This helps me resist the temptation to interfere. To save the young penguin seems the right thing to do. But in fact, to save the penguin would be wrong. Just another way of indulging that romantic fallacy that everything in nature must be lovely and benign. So 
much as it hurts me, hoping somehow to transcend this palpable horror, I will watch to the bitter end. possible environment. I remember the Gentoos, further down the coast, nesting on wide beaches, an open field. by regurgitating fish from their gullets. No rest for a weary mother, no matter what the species. seems to feel that her offspring are big enough to be off on their own.
thrill of swimming with the sea lions. I'm determined to dive with a whale. sockets in the upper jaw. The penis, normally retracted into the body, extended in death. The whale's overall length, approximately 50 feet. Cause of death, unknown. No visible indications. The skin's so soft. The skin's already drying up. Look at this, Carl. I never knew it was so thin. You can see right through it. Why did he die? Was he sick? Stranded? I'll never know. This whale bone yarn is a sad reminder of what we've done to this intelligent and magnificent beast. years and there are still nations committed to this slaughter except for its meat there's nothing we get from the whale which cannot be synthesized for more available materials the killing goes on to spot our quarry, the right whale. Instead, what we find is an elephant seal rookery. A picture of pure contentment. It's obvious where this huge animal gets its name. are starting to fight. Only when we move in close do I really appreciate the size of these beasts. Lucky for us, they're not too fast on their flippers. female arrives, pregnant. Only after she has given birth will she become sexually responsive.
A pregnant female awaits the moment of birth. seal pup seems to have an easier time than the sea lion pup did on the island of the birds. This little guy comes out rare and a go. The female tosses wet pebbles onto her back to keep herself moist and cool. <laughs> He's cute, eh? for dominance. Every animal living in an organized group must struggle for dominance. Order based on fear is a law of nature, rooted in deep-seated instinct. Each elephant seal knows whom he must fear and who fears him. This is so deeply a part of elephant seal society that this battle will not end until there is a clear victor. We are in the right place after all. Just when we least expect it, a hundred yards out is a right whale. I must see how close I can come to the whales and try to judge what their behavior will be when I dive among them. The Zodiac boat, despite its seaworthiness, has never felt smaller.
<laughs> the right whales come here to breed as they have since before man can remember. There are whale fossils that date back millions of years. Now, to the best of our knowledge, there may be only 400 of this species left in these waters. If these whales are not protected, yet another magnificent animal will have disappeared from the face of the earth. capable of doing something just for the sheer thrill of it. It is this largest of all mammals. Going. Okay. Uh, this is where we've just been. Well, more or less. Let's see right there. Uh -huh. It's right over there. Uh, right there. That's the headland over there. forth is called breaching. No one knows why they do it. Maybe it's just for the joy it gives. If any animal is capable of doing something just for the sheer thrill of it, it is this largest of all mammals. experience is not the same as with the sea lions. Though whales are capable of moving with considerable speed, my presence must be accounted for. They loom slowly toward me. And when they are close, they study me with a kind of patient curiosity. We cannot 
cannot yet decipher the meaning of the sounds the whales make, but we know they communicate over amazingly long distances. rough skin called callosities on the head of the right whale have been compared with human facial hair and the whale can be identified by it. and indifference made me bold enough to get close. Too close. I forgot that these 60-ton whales can bring down their 20-foot flukes with enough force to crush me instantly. straight up into the sun, like this. So there you are, and then the fluke, like so. You have to see it. <laughs> Journal entry number 104. Reflecting on what happened earlier today, my experience with the whales, I think of another species I had studied the previous year, a species equally threatened. Condor. 
I had seen them, wings stretched out against the sky, riding the currents of the air that sweep up from the Andes Mountains in western Patagonia. They are scavengers, huge birds, unable to kill their own food. But they are also symbols, the holy bird of the Indians. I spoke of them with my friend and teacher, the great naturalist Andres Gi. No one knows more about the condors of the region than this man. I told him I wanted to observe the nesting of the condor, and he agreed to help me, to show me the way to a nesting ground he had found years ago in a remote, almost inaccessible mountain range. The ancient Andean forest was cool and peaceful. The warm campfire was welcome at night. The sound of birds, a wonderfully soothing way to get up in the morning. These hardy austral parakeet build their nests further south than any other members of the parrot family. I wanted to stop and study them properly, but the call of the condor gripped my imagination just as it did the Indians of this country long ago. The horses are left behind, and we arrive at the cliffs Andres G.I. had described. After three days, the work of setting the ropes is complete. I must climb the sheer face of the cliff in order to examine the precariously set nests. The nests are there, but they're old and long since abandoned. I'm unable to find even one active nest. Mira, condor! One adult condor. Is he the rear guard, I wonder, seeing to it that I don't desecrate their ancient nesting ground? I decorate myself with a condor feather I find in one of the nests. What link binds these empty nests to the whales watching me beneath the sea? Extinction, of course. They're both threatened species. But there's something more, some understanding of what I have seen which still eludes me. Entry number 105. Morning once more on the Gulf of San Jose. Above and below the water, the animals are gathering. There's more activity than I had expected, but the dolphins, usually so curious, circle me without coming very near as if they can't make up their minds what to do about me. The most intelligent of all mammals after man, the dolphin is among the most elegantly adapted of all creatures to its environment. thousands, perhaps millions. How can they be counted? They are the cause of what can only be called a feeding frenzy. Then 
I noticed something more. The circling movements of the dolphins have an entirely unexpected purpose. They are herding the anchovies, corralling them in this half mile of shallow bay. Some continue herding. Others dart in and out of the frantically swimming anchovies to feed. birds and smaller creatures of the shore take advantage of the bounty which the dolphins, however unintentionally, have provided. The event goes on all morning and leaves me feeling like a clumsy interloper, half able to swim and half able to understand. Like a student first looking through a microscope, I sense an order I cannot fully comprehend and a purpose to the order I may never fully grasp. The anchovies are gone, and I return to the boat. Journal entry number 112. Days go into nights. How long I have been here, I've forgotten. Not sleeping well. Small incidents disturb me in ways they shouldn't. Carlos seems quiet. He limits himself to small observations on the day or discussions about equipment. Decision made to return to the island of birds. Journal entry, 187. Morning spent photographing oyster catchers, a small bird with a powerful beak which wanders among the tidal pools hunting food. Became interested in the mother finding food for her young. Took some photographs. Still not certain why I came back here, working almost automatically while my mind wanders that keeps returning to the empty condor nests high in the mountains and the whales watching me beneath the sea. Will I know what it is when it happens?
Only one animal has a fin like that. Is this it? What I came back here for? Orcas. The whale they call the killer. I must get pictures. I must record everything. crazy fool to get the shots that's why to document to tell the story but what story that I tried to save the seals I could have saved some maybe the scavengers out there they are more a part of the scene than I am the whales the sea lions living and dead and the scavenging birds. They're all part of a system.
and I'm the outsider. I disturbed the delicate, balanced relationships. The sea lions, some of them died because I blocked their escape. More afraid of me than of the killer whales. I was the intruder, the empty nests, the whale's eye, and the dead sea lions say the same thing. Man is the intruder. We are no longer in harmony with nature. My very existence, man's existence, is an intrusion. The question is, how can man, how can I, find my way back to the natural order of things and be one again with all the living things? It's their world, too. Can I, can we, afford to exist without them? <laughs>